My name is Hoyne. I'm a consultant psychiatrist and uh, work for Global Psychiatry Archives. And we are currently doing this uh, series about mental health explained. And uh, today I would like to talk about old age psychiatry and uh, it has been beca uh, before called as, as psychogeatrics, more or less means the same. And um, it's uh, strange enough, uh, quite a new specialty and it has been more or less started in the uh, last century, so let's say in the 60s, 70s, when people were more and more realized that elderly people not just have a cerebrovascular in insufficiency, but different types of a diagnosis. And um, geriatric medicine also has changed, and uh, one of the views of these things is that there's lots of uh, here comorbidity and interaction of different uh, diseases, chronic diseases, and uh, for that reason, uh, uh, the uh, old age psychiatry is something which is a new. Old age psychiatry covers um, a lot of um, pre-existing psychiatric disorders in the elderly. So uh, previously people with schizophrenia would have uh, been dying and now they're treated much better, they live much longer and they then graduate into um, people with schizophrenia being old and having other problems as well, um, especially in the, uh, schizophrenia there might be early early cognitive impairment. You might be aware that schizophrenia at some point in time was called dementia precox, so early dementia. Um, new disorders um, which are related to the age are coming up as well. So that's uh, depression, um, social, social isolation, sensory deficits, bereavement, uh, physical infirmit, uh, infirmity and dependence from others. So these are uh, specific stresses and circumstances which are related to old age. Then there are disorders which uh, uh, relate to the aging brain and uh, specifically dementia and Alzheimer's dementia. That's, these are the problems which have um, something to do with the aging of the brain, the vessels and the um, brain cells themselves. On the other hand, um, very often and ma many of the patients who are seen in old age psychiatry are seen by liaison services when psychiatric complications of other physical health problems um, cause confusion. So that's sometimes very often seen. You have psychiatric problems which coexist with a f a physical problems um, and you have um, specific um, responses to medication which uh, again might lead to confusions. Um, the cognitive uh, problems, um, mild cognitive impairment and as I mentioned uh, dementia is very important in old age psychiatry and uh, all these need a specific treatment. Um, this, the treatment is often slightly different from the treatment of younger people because older people are much more dependent on others. They need, they have carers, the carers have needs themselves. And uh, so let's say that way there's lots of um, interaction between um, different services. So. Old age psychiatry is very much a multidisciplinary inter uh, work. It's and uh, it's you know with the social services, it's, it's nursing care. It might be a different types of nursing care. Diabetes care might uh, be something which needs to be organised alongside mental health problems. So there might also different uh, welfare systems. Housing might be important and legal problems as well. And uh, sometimes it's as essential to get charities involved in the care. Sometimes religion becomes more important in older people and uh, sometimes this is uh, to be integrated and uh, supported. Right, okay, so uh, it's not just me who gets older. I must say that with some regret, um, but just ignore it, please. Um, but the population in general gets older 
it's you know um let's say for 100 years ago then we had five percent so one in 20 maybe um having been over the age of 65 um so now it's nearly 20 percent so the um biggest or the the uh, the biggest aging group which uh, proportionally increases is the people about 90 or even 100 Let's say that way, 50 years ago, someone being 100 was the absolute exception. And um, I've never, as a doctor, I'd never seen anybody. But now I get more and more people um, who who have the uh, cards from the Queen and uh, possibly in the future from the, from the King. So what led to that? You know, at the end of the day, medicine uh, has itself um, caused the problems of uh, old age psychiatry because um, one thing is that infant mortality was uh, controlled or treated much better, P uh, kids survived, infectious diseases have been uh, controlled with antibiotics, sanitation has helped, the living standards and the quality of life uh, uh, has, has changed and uh, all this, you know, better food have led to a declining um, declining rate of acute reasons for death. And uh, this led uh, to older people or baby boomers at our time um, coming through the ages. Um, on the other hand, there's also uh, problems with that, you know, because, it's, you know, as much as people like to live, I don't want to die now, um, what they like to live, um, there's more disability and uh, more health needs. Um, we have a lower um, working population who has to support or needs to support the people who are older. And uh, there's, let's say it that way, the comorbidity or the dementia rates are higher in the people above 65. So previously, maybe... Um, of the f whatever 5% of the population were above 65, 5% were suffering dementia. Now we have an increased population about 85 and nearly 30% or a third of people are 60, uh, over 85 suffer dementia. Usually there's something paradox that some people um, who are get very old and um, sometimes are these uh, super healthy people and uh, they quite might be absolutely fine up to the age of 90. And uh, one of my favorite psychiatrists, Norman Sartorius, uh, who still gives talks and lectures, um, is absolutely fine, has great ideas and is 88. So, um, but others, you know, they struggle and many people who have been smoking or haven't, didn't have a, um, yeah, a good life, um, they might have other diseases. Right. Um, the other thing is, you know, the social life changes. People are more alone. They live more in care homes, they have more uh, support. So you have lots of um, depression. Depression is something which is um, getting um, more frequent in the elderly. It might be a different type of depression, not this acute depression, but more or less the lack of uh, more or less loneliness is a, is a major problem. Many people live in sheltered accommodation, nursing homes, and uh, the one of the things is that uh, if you live in a nursing home, um, you are more uh, needy, you are more ill, and uh, of those who die in nursing homes, nearly two-thirds uh, are suffering dementia, and the other third possibly uh, lives with severe physical health problems which can't be managed at home anymore. Family are, families are getting smaller, and for that reason, people have to go into uh, nursing homes if they have major problems. So all this leads to an increase of um, people who um, need to be served by old age psychiatry services. Um, you know, there's also need to uh, change the attitudes. Many of the um, previously diseases which uh, were not recognized get more and more um, recognition. To some extent, this is also the role of the old age psychiatrist. He needs to be an advocate for um, the interest or for the support of the elderly, um, making sure that you know, people get 
the funding in this respect. You know, and all age psychiatrists are teachers. They have to uh, teach people about the comorbidity and about the um, diseases. Maybe I just drop in the fact that uh, old age psychiatry is sometimes called the, um, the disease of the the uh, medical faculty of all the three Ds, dementia, depression, and delirium. But, you know, we talk about depression in um, in the elderly at some point in, uh, later in another video. So they have to promote uh, good health. They have to look at holistic care. As I said, there's lots of interactions between physical and mental health problems. Um, he has to learn about that. You know, things are changing. And especially when you look at uh, COVID, elderly have um, been affected quite a lot with COVID. People have died a lot, and most of the people who have died, or many of the people who have died, uh, died in nursing homes. So in this respect, you know, people have to think about new diseases and uh, have to be creative about these things and um, design new models of care and interaction and support for people at home or in nursing homes. Um, one of my favorite or maybe important thing is that nursing homes uh, should also be something which brings or keeps quality of life. And uh, there's no point just bringing people just into beds and let them die. I think um, the nursing homes have to rethink um, that there are places to live. They're the homes of the patients. So people have their home in nursing homes. In this respect, um, people in nursing homes should be treated as people who want to live, who want to enjoy, and who want to be cared, but also want to be independent and have a decent life. Um, as I said, many people are involved in uh, dementia and other old age psychiatry care. In this respect, people have to be team players. Psychiatry in old age is a very much a multidisciplinary discipline. And uh, yeah, to some extent, I think uh, old age psychiatry has to look forward because uh, to some extent, um, things are not getting much easier. The more people are helped, the more they grow old more pr uh, problems there are and uh, the more um, the more difficult and more needy people are so in this respect we have to look forward to what's coming in the future and uh, yes I think that's a quite interesting and challenging subject in in, in medicine and uh, if you have any interest in that please um, yeah please uh, get involved and uh, many people do, they become carers and uh, they can do a lot. Right, um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope um, you might subscribe to our channel. I hope you might watch the other videos. And one of the big issues, you know, from glo for Global Psychiatry Archives is to um, increase the mental health awareness and to increase the mental health literacy that people are understood. One of the big problems I mentioned previously is the fact that people or relatives can recognize a disorder, but they really struggle to distinguish um, between depression, delirium, dementia, or anything. So in this respect, the society could learn a bit, and that would help a lot to help people with dementia and other mental health problems. Thanks for your interest, and have a nice day. Bye.